In today's video, I'm gonna share with you a really simple tip and drill to make sure you're flighting those irons better. Check this video out. Welcome back to the True Golf Academy. You've joined me, John Watts, today at Branston Golf and Country Club. Today's video is all gonna be about flighting those irons better. I'm talking about hitting those nice high flying, quick stopping irons, but are also gonna give you a lot of distance and penetration through the wind. So I'm gonna share with you a really simple tip and drill that's gonna help you improve your iron play. Now, actually a lot of what we're discussing today can be relevant with the woods as well, but I'm gonna be focusing on an iron. I've got a mid iron here and a fault that I see with a number of golfers. Now, a big misconception is that we've gotta really hit down on the golf ball with our irons. People are worried about striking them poorly, thinning or topping shots. Oh, you, you know, you looked up, you need to hit down on the golf ball more. And I just wanna go on to that a little bit further and go into that myth, because our hands actually should reach their lowest point at this position here, just before impact at the last parallel position, P6. So at this stage, that is the lowest point of our hands. Our hands should now be working upwards into impact, and that confuses a lot of golfers. Not only is my lead hand here working upwards into impact, but we will start to see my whole lead side extending. My lead knee, my lead hip, so my whole side that's closest to the target is working up as it's rotating. So I'm moving upwards into the golf ball. And that confuses a lot of people, but what we've got to lose on the downswing into impact is we've got to allow both arms to extend because you will see that pre-impact my trail elbow here is still bent towards my hip. So that's got to straighten into impact and I've got to lose or down cock my wrists. Now I'm not consciously thinking of that, but as my body is starting to rise, my elbow is starting to straighten and I'm starting to down cock or lose the angle that I created in my wrists. We've got to let that go at some point. We cannot maintain, maintain, maintain. So we're maintaining it to the right point if we can and this is a great position here, this last parallel P6 position that we want to allow the club to fall as my body is rising and extending. And I find a lot of golfers consciously, too consciously trying to hit down onto the golf ball. And often when they're trying to strike down into it, of course, we see the lead with the upper body and very much an out to in path. But I meet a lot of golfers who are striking too much down with their irons and striking some very heavy shots from there. Now they, they might actually strike it okay from there, but really deal off the golf club. And you can gain a lot of distance with perhaps a wedge in your hand that you can suddenly hit the wedge miles, but you'll really struggle with your longer, your mid to longer irons, being able to flight them in and actually stop them on the green. So if you are a golfer who's striking down on it too much, a simple drill for you to do is actually pop the ball on a driver tee peg. So tee it way up in the air where you would hit your driver from. I've got, as I said, a seven iron here and try and pick the ball off that surface. It's a great simple exercise just to do on the driving range and get that sensation that we're hitting up on it. Now I've measured myself doing this and actually I feel like I'm hitting up on it and I'm still striking down on it by a couple of degrees. So tour average for a mid iron that I've got here is about four degrees on the way down that the club is traveling. Slower swingers actually shouldn't hit down on it as much. So your average typical golfer swinging it 10, 15 mile an hour slower than the tour players, they need to be hitting down on it maybe by more like two degrees. But often for those golfers, they feel like they're hitting up on it. Now they might be striking down on it, but too much because they're leading with the upper body. They might be striking down on it too much because they're sliding ahead of it. But if you are someone who's struggling to flight your iron's high enough, you're taking big, huge divots, you're struggling with the contact. This could be a really simple drill and exercise for you. So I'm gonna start by positioning the ball more where I'd position a driver, so a little bit further up in my stance. I'm not gonna go quite as far forwards as I would play a driver opposite my heel. I'm about a club head's width on the way, on the way in, but I'm more forwards than I'd normally be. I'm just gonna get that sensation that I'm picking the ball off the surface because my hands, and lead side are extending, rising into impact, not 
downwards here and not staying static. So really good exercise, just try and pick it off the tee peg. Now definitely got that sensation of picking the ball off the surface. I think I could get that better still. That strike felt a little bit high out of the head for me. And when that strikes a little high out of the head, I want you to go ahead and hit up on it or feel like you're hitting up on it a little bit more. As I said, the idea and the feeling here of trying to overdo it is that uh, my hands are actually rising into impact, not down, 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 down. You know, we're into winter, soft, wet turf conditions. And what a lot of golfers are struggling with is quality of contact and strike. And that drill, I'm not gonna to do too many of them, but that drill there would really help you get that feeling that the hands are actually working actually a little bit more upwards as my body is extending into impact. Once you've done some off the tee, I would encourage you to actually go ahead and get down to this pre-impact P6 position here at the last parallel. So when the club is parallel to the ground, small little pump movement. You'll have seen me do this a lot if, you're, if you've watched my channel before. So small little pump movement. And I just want to get the sensation that my hands are moving up into impact. My body is extending. Let me go ahead and just do that. So I'm going to wind up and make a backswing down to last parallel. and just get that sensation. Now I've taken a divot there, but the divot is shallow and it's happening after impact. And the sensation for me is that my handle is rising into impact, not down, 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 down. If you are someone who's struggling with, as I said, big divots, flighting it too low, struggling with the quality of contact, perhaps losing some distance with the longer clubs, this sensation is really gonna work for you. You can tell a lot from your divot pattern. Um, I would like it to be a shallow-ish divot. If you're taking big things that you could bury a cat in or a small dog, you are striking downwards too much. If you can get yourself on a launch monitor where you can measure this data, fantastic. The optimum for you would depend on speed, but no more than about four degrees on the way down. Often golfers are striking too much. If you haven't got access to that, perhaps just on video, look from a face on camera at where your hands are. They should be rising into impact as we start to see our lead side extending. We don't want to see our body staying down and static. We definitely don't want to get that feeling that we're leading with our upper body to try and strike downwards on the golf ball. That is a real myth that we're striking down. My hands are actually moving up into impact. The reason the club is still moving down, as I said, is my trail arm, my one that's furthest away from the target, is straightening. And I'm losing that cock in my wrist. So that wrist cock we had on the way back, we've got to lose it at some stage. I know if you can give those exercises a go, start off the tee peg, off the driver tee, feel like you're picking the ball off the surface. Then some small little pump drills before we go into putting that into a full swing are really gonna help your game if this is something you struggle with, if you're struggling with the striker that in contact with your irons. If this video has helped, put some comments below. It's great to hear from you guys, any content you'd like me to film and make sure you hit the thumbs up. Also, uh, think about subscribing to my channel to never miss a video again, at least two instructional videos a week.